ARCHICAD 12 allows for creation of complete stairs using the stair tool. In the stair tool we have a choice of complete stairs, landings and various elements of the stairs. So you can create quite complex stairs. There's also the ability to create custom stairs and that's available from this button right here. If we click on that, this palette opens up. There are several shapes of stairs available and parameters for each of those stairs can be adjusted and can be set in a customized way. This tool also allows the creation of ramps in several different types of shapes. We'll have a look at stairs. This is a new stair, the single winder with a U-turn, particularly applicable for Australian conditions. And let's just select that one. And now we're presented with a stair maker dialog box. In here, you've got a number of settings, and this allows us to adjust the different parameters of the new stairs. It's all icon driven, so a lot of it's fairly self-explanatory. We'll start by setting the height, and that's three meters high. There are certain parameters that are required for the project that need to need to remain constant, so you can just lock those after you've changed them. I'm going to change the width to 950. I might lock that as well. I'm going to make the steps 250, and the riser height, we might leave that at 188. I can also change the number of winders. The gap between the two flights is 200. I could also say that I want both flights to have the same amount of risers, which I can also lock. We can define whether the stair will butt up against the floor of the upper floor, or whether the last step will be at the same level as the floor. So I'm gonna leave that as a setting at the moment. And there's a few other things we can set. For example, the gap between the landing steps and the first horizontal step. I'm just going to move that to a small value and I'm going to change that to the same so it minimizes the length. Also by clicking on the inside corner of the stair it, we can define whether the corner will be plain, chamfered or filleted on the inside. We could also do it on the outside corner of the landings I'm just going to leave that as it is for the time being. Next thing that you can look at is the construction of the stairs. I'm just going to pick the solid construction. You can see the thickness of the underside of the stair. You can also set materials, pen colors, and all these settings are fairly self-explanatory and fairly visual. I'm just going to move to the next tag there. We can change the thickness of the treads and the nosing here. Once again, I can muck around with the materials. One of the interesting ones, and not necessarily self-explanatory, are the settings for the balustrading. There are basically three options, and here we can see that balustrades are set for the whole of the stairs inside and outside and the second one's just on the outside or the inside and you can see if I put once this option is selected if you move your mouse over the edge where you want the balustrade set and the last tool allows you to create individual balustrades for every single length of the railing that goes around the stairs. So here on the outside of the stair I might pick a simple bar. Over here choose a simple bar as well and maybe the remaining on the inside I might make post with panels just so that we can show you something that you'd probably never build. And for the last one here, make it post and panels again. So every time you choose post and panels, you'll be able to define how the posts should be distributed along that flight of stairs. At the moment, it says that the posts should be approximately 800 millimeters apart. You might want to change that to 1200. There's also an option to snap to the corner. It'll make sure that there's a post at every corner. 
So I'll set the same over here and then over here. On this side here, there are settings for the fixing of the balustrade where the balustrade should be offset from the edge of the stair, how high above the treads they should be and so forth. So this is another area that you can experiment with. The next button, this is new to version 12. This allows us to set up the visual presentation of the stairs once you've actually placed it in plan. Once it's inserted in plans, you've got different types of representations for, for the home story as well as what happens on the upper stories or adjoining stories. So maybe I'll pick style 11 which shows all the treads. Then we've got the walking line start symbol. The first one's a circle. Second or second style is a circle with all the quadrants filled separately and double lines or none. Again, once it'll depend on what sort of representation you're looking for. The arrow symbols, there's a number of styles there too, and also the symbols for the rails. Maybe I'll pick number four. On the right hand side, there is an extensive arrangement of parameters that we can define the line types. And if this isn't set correctly from the beginning, it actually can be adjusted later. So you're just gonna have to have a look at all these parameters and sometimes it's more convenient to save the stair at this stage and edit it once you've actually placed it. So this stair saves as a GDL object and make sure if you're going to move the project that you move that file as well. So I'm just going to save that. Now it takes us back to the standard stair default settings dialog box and all the same parameters are available through here but not as graphically shown. So you can define the symbol, the text, and the appearance of the text, and everything else that we saw before. Also the 2D symbols, that's also shown as well. Now there's a whole range of settings there that can be changed once again. And for example, we can change our starting symbol and our end symbol. I might just change that to a much smaller size. Type of the text. And lots of other parameters. So if I just OK that and just insert the stair, obviously in 3D it should look right. So that's looking OK. You can see the different types of railings that we actually set up for the different sides of the stairs. So the top tread here is on the same level as the upper floor. Once it's actually inserted, whether you want a 2D or 3D view, you can always select it and click on this button here. And then now we can edit it in much the same sort of way that it was in StairMaker. So for example, if I wanted to get rid of some text, I could expand the text display and rise and run text, turn it off, go OK, go back to the floor span, you can see that the text or the writing that was there is now gone. You could also adjust the symbols for the arrows and the starting points and so forth. The other thing that you can do is select the stair, go back to the stair settings and with the stair selected, hit edit stair once again. And that's the stair that actually created the stair as well. And click on that and it takes you back to stair builder or stair maker. So here we could change the parameters. For example, the winders and adjust the flight settings. We could also change the construction type. Hit OK, it takes a couple of seconds to rewrite the GDL object. And if you hit OK, and now the stair should have changed a little bit. So this is quite a major upgrade of stair maker in comparison to the previous version. The third way of creating stairs is by using a fill. With the fill we can define any shape that we like. 
as long as it's basically in the shape of a stair. So we've just used a fill for that. Then we can draw a line through the object defining the direction of the stairs. And now select it, the line and the fill. And then under the design menu, we go create stair using selection. And over here, it's selecting this icon here, and I'll push OK. And here we have various parameters, and I can work through the same parameters as we have with other stairs. So once we're happy with the stair, we can push OK. And once again, I'm going to save it to the same place. I'm going to call this strange stair, push OK. And then I'm going to just delete the fill, and I've forgot my original stair here and I might turn the story sensitivity off once again push OK. Now if we go to the 3D window by pushing F5 on the PC, F4 on the Mac we can see the new stair. This also works with curves so if I have this fill and drew something that was Then if I define the way the stair rises, I select the stair, go to design, create stair using, OK, and then once again we have the stair and push OK. So now I'm going to save this to the same spot again. and delete the fills and if we go to the 3D window again we should have the other stair as well. So there's quite a few tools there to help you create stairs and even after you've placed the stair you can actually edit them. So if I wanted to edit that I just select it there and if there's editing to be done that's not that's beyond the scope of the dialog here, I can just click on this button here, gloat, and select edit this stair. Let's just say I wanted to chamfer or fill it this inside corner to say 800 millimeters, push OK and chamfer this one and push OK, OK and then we'll see that that has been changed and I can also change the balustrades at any time.